This video outlines how to configure and create indoor maps using the new indoor mapping application and the studio. Prior to working with the studio, we strongly recommend you read the guidelines we have published. These are available on the ServiceNow community portal. The first step is to enter the studio. To do so, go to the list of applications and select Map Studio. The studio is a one-stop shop tool you can use to manage the entire life cycle of your maps. It allows you to transform existing buildings, floor plans, into nice interactive indoor maps. The studio allows you to create, update and publish indoor maps of your own without any external assistance. First and foremost, you need to start creating a campus. A campus is a logical group of buildings that are located in the same neighborhood and also includes outdoor areas around buildings. In order to create a new campus, you have to provide first the country where it is located, then a full postal address. This is required because the indoor mapping application uses a worldwide map and need to locate your campus on it. Finally, you also have to give a name to the new campus. Please note that this name must be unique within your organization. Then press the Continue button. The next step is to create your first building. Please note that it is mandatory to have at least one building in your campus. Enter the address of the building, give it a name and press the Save button. If a building is found on the map at the address you entered, then you will see the following screen. If both the proposed location and the shape of the building are correct, press continue. If not, click on the dots to move the building and change its shape. You can add as many dots as you need. Note that your polygon must match the exact shape of your building on the world map. Finally, press continue. Now it is time to create floors. First, select the building in the list, then click on the Add a Floor button. To make sure your floor is properly configured, fill in the fields. If you click on the arrow on the right of the form, the fields are going to be automatically populated. When finished, click on the Save button. Then, repeat the floor creation as many times as you need for each building of the campus. It is time to configure the boundary of the campus. First, select the campus. You should see a polygon that represents the campus on the outdoor map. Check all the buildings are within the boundary of the campus. If necessary, you can change the shape and the size of the polygon. When done, press Continue. The first part of the campus configuration is done. Now it's time to import data within your premises. Once your campus and buildings are created, Click on Manage Workplace, then select the floors and floor plans in the submenu. Now it is time to populate the floor we previously created. Click on the Add a Source button and select a DWG file. Give a name to your source, check it is associated with the right floor and press the Save button. Once you have uploaded your DWG file, it is processed internally on the Map Studio server. This can take some time depending on various factors such as the size of the CAD file, the complexity of the floor plan, or the server occupancy rate. It is not unusual to wait 30 seconds or even one or two minutes for large or complex buildings. This screen shows you a preview of the floor plan. It is now necessary to georeference your floor plan on the outdoor map. 
To do so, click on the Edit Georeference button. This screen allows you to precisely position your floor plan on the outdoor map. You can use the pins to move your floor plan and to adjust the scale. Once done, click on the Save button. The next step is to tell the studio how to categorize and style the layers retrieved in the CAD file. You must minorly bind every layer you want to keep with a layer type. This is done simply by ticking the checkbox and selecting a layer type. Next is setting up your point of interest by configuring the block or text model depending on the structure of your CAD file. The process is the same for both. Start by selecting the point of interest you want to display, then click on the drop down button to select the layer on which the POI is located in order to retrieve the shape of each space. If you do not want to create polygons, click on do not use polygons. You will have pins instead. Now configure your name template by clicking on the drop-down button and selecting text. That way, all the text present on the CAD file will be imported as is on the map. The title field will be the same if the relevant switch is activated. Finally, select a place type to categorize and style your POIs. Repeat this process for all the relevant kind of POIs. When finished, press Start Import. To see the result of the import, click on Manage Workplace, Submenu Overview. Then click on the building and floor you want to inspect. Once your campus and buildings are created, click on Manage Workplace then select the floors and floor plans in the submenu. Now it's time to populate the floor we previously created. Click on the Add a Source button and select a PNG file. Give a name to your source, check it is associated with the right floor and press the Save button. This screen shows you a preview of the floor plan. It is now necessary to georeference your floor plan on the outer map. To do so, click on the Edit Georeference button. This screen allows you to precisely position your floor plan on the outer map. You can use the pins to move your floor plan. You can also use the pins to adjust the scale. Once done, Click on the Save button. Select a layer type to categorize the PNG you are importing. Then click on Start Import. Once your raster file is imported, you need to manually create point of interest. To do so, click on Manage Workplace, Places Submenu. You have to choose between two possibilities to create your point of interest. You can either create points or polygons depending on your point of interest type. To create a point, click on New Point, then drop it at the selected location. Then fill in the relevant fields. You will have to fill in the name field, which is a unique ID, the title field, which is what is displayed on the map. Then select a place type to provide the right category and icon. And finally, check that the floor field is correct. Then press Save. To create a polygon, click on New Polygon. Then draw the room shape by clicking on the different corners. The same way we did for a point, you then have to fill in the same relevant fields, namely name, title, and place type. Please note that when applied to a polygon, place type also defines the color of the polygon. 
You can also click on Add a Marker if you wish to change the position of the pin on the polygon. Click on Add an Entrance if you wish to define the main entry point used by the Wayfinding Engine for that polygon. This is an optional step where you can import elements such as trees, company logos or any graphic content on the outdoor surroundings of your building to provide additional context. The file will be a PNG, therefore the import process will be similar to the one used for raster import seen before. First, go to Manage Workplace and select the Floors and Floor Plans submenu. Then, select the campus on which you want to add your outdoor layer. Click on Add a new source and select the file you want to import. Then, hit the Gereference button to position and scale your elements on the outdoor map. When done, press Save. Next, select the layer type to categorize the file you are importing and then hit Start Import. Finally, you can also add outdoor point of interest if you have any. The process is the same as the one you used when importing a raster file. Make sure your floor is set to Compass Outdoor when doing so. Whether you imported a CAD file or a raster file, you will still have to manually define a direction graph. If you skip this step, you won't be able to use the wayfinding feature. Directions are used to compute routes from point A to point B on the map. In order to do so, you have to manually draw lines in areas where people are allowed to work within the building. This step cannot be automated. Go to Manage Workplace, then select Directions. First, select the building and floor where you would like to begin adding the directions. Then, select Draw and begin drawing routes along all the hallways for each floor. Please note lines must be straight as they will be used by the Wayfinding Engine to display routes within the building. Once a graph is created, different segment attributes can be applied. All segments created are by default set to active. This state can be edited by clicking on the active or inactive buttons. This way, the Wayfinding algorithm will calculate a similar route without going through these segments. When created, all segments can be used both ways. However, this can be changed to enable one-way only directions. To do so, select one way and define in which way the segment can be used. Small arrows should appear on the map. Each of the segments of the direction graph can also be made accessible. Once the graph is created and properly configured, the last step is to create the connectors. Connectors are stairs, elevators or escalators, enabling the Wayfinding Engine to go to one floor to another. Without connectors, no directions can be computed between different floors. To create a connector, select the node that represents it and click on Create New Connector. Make sure the correct building is selected. Then give the node a name. Indicate the state of the node, active or inactive. Indicate the type, elevator, stair, escalator, ramp. Indicate in which direction it goes. Edit the different waiting times to ensure the wayfinding calculations will be correct. Select which modes the connector is active for. When done, press Save. Once the connectors have been created on the first floor, you can go ahead and link the other floors of the building together. 
select the node and then make sure you link it with the same node you have previously created for the same connector. Once the direction graphs have been created on every floor, do the same process to add a graph on the campus. Then make sure you link the two graphs by connecting the two end nodes. When done, save all the changes made. The last step in setting up your campus is creating a view. This is done in the Style Editor part. Click on Style Editor, then on the default view. Then click on Choose which content to display. A new dialog box will appear. It allows you to decide which parts of the building you want to display in this view. We strongly recommend you select everything in each topic. When done, press continue. The final step consists in defining the way the campus is displayed. There are many parameters on which you can rely on to decide where the marker appears, where the title is displayed, and what is the default zoom level. Make the changes you need here, if any, then press Save this style.